Welcome along to the DJ Mixtape. We're a brand new channel dedicated to DJ culture and electronic music. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at track warping in Ableton Live. Now, if you're programming a DJ mix, particularly in live, or if you're performing with Ableton Live, this might be quite useful to you. Now, track warping is um, manipulating a piece of music so that the tempo remains constant throughout and we can do this in Ableton by adjusting some of the beat grids so that it matches Ableton's internal clock. Um, now it's worth remembering that uh, when we increase or decrease uh, the tempo of audio within Ableton, it maintains the original pitch or key of that audio. So. Similarly, if you were DJing on some Pioneer CDJs, you would press the master tempo feature and speed up, slow down the record, and the original pitch would stay the same. Um, today, we're gonna to be taking a look at a contemporary electronic track. So it's worth bearing in mind that the tempo should be pretty consistent throughout because it's produced on a modern day DAW. Um, if you're interested in track warping with older records or records that might have a live drummer and please check out one of our tutorial videos in our tutorials playlist on our channel uh, and you can find out how to do that there. Um, we're just about to jump into live. Before we go into live, um, the fundamentals of Ableton um, track warping haven't really changed much over the years. So these fundamentals have stayed the same so what i'm trying to say is it doesn't really matter what version of ableton live you have um, the principles are the same and you can um, hopefully get something out of this regardless of the version you're using so without further ado let's jump into live so here we are inside ableton live we've just dragged a track into the main arrangement page remember inside live you've got two windows if you hit the tab key you get over to your session view and hit it again you're in your arrangement view i recommend working in this view for this one it's just a bit easier so the name of the game here is to make sure ableton is running at the same tempo if you don't have any key detection or tempo detection and you're not sure what um tempo your track is, you need to play it through an external player like iTunes, uh, hit play and then tap along with your uh, track uh, and your tempo will come up here. So it's worth remembering with uh, live, when you're using long form music or whole tracks like this, Ableton's going to have a go at warping it but most of the time it doesn't do a very good job. So we're going to do it manually. Um, if we come into Live's preferences here and come down to Record Warp Launch, it's going to give us some options underneath where it says Warp Fade. Um, if you come down here, it says Auto Warp Long Samples. Make sure that's turned off and then we're going to do it manually and that's the easiest way to do this. So double click on your audio there and it's going to open it up in your editor down here. Make sure your warp is turned on so it's yellow. High quality, that's on. And your transient settings, put it on complete. Um, the other settings are more for if you're in the studio and making a track. You've got beats and tones and repitch which maintains the original pitch of the record. Complex Pro, which is pretty hardcore on your computer's processor. But I think with whole tracks, Complex gives you the, the best balance of transients. So keep that on there. And if you go into your um, do, 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 preferences, you can actually choose um, Complex here as your default. So. What we're going to try and do here now is sync up our track with Ableton so that we can either put it into our program DJ mix or we can bounce it down and use it in our live set. So we need to find the first beat of the bar 
of the song, sorry. So if we look at our flag here, this is where our sample is going to play from. And if you look at the top, it's determining where the audio is played from. So let's just stick it right at the beginning and we'll have a listen. So we've got ourselves quite a long beatless intro here. So that's no good to us at the moment. We can get this audio back later, but for the moment, let's go and find ourselves the first kick. Now it's looking like it's gonna come in around here, or if we look down here, it's gonna come in here. So let's move our flag over roughly where we are, and let's zoom in so we can get some more accuracy. We've got three different uh, modes here. We've got the magnifying glass, the playhead, and the arrow. So the magnifying glass is used for zooming in and out. So hold down the mouse, pull down to zoom in, up to zoom out. The playhead is pretty obvious. Hold it wherever you want to play the audio and click. And the arrow is for highlighting audio. We're not going to be using that. So at a guess, I'd say this is where our first kick drum starts. But we have to be careful because some tracks will give you a snare roll or some kind of drum or percussion before the first beat of the bar. So let's just try and highlight if this is in fact the first kick or it's just some kind of lead into the first bar. So we'll just play it through. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's our first kick. So let's move our flag over. Let's zoom in again. And we can see Ableton's put in a semi-permanent transient here. That's where it thinks something is going to start. So let's move our flag there. Let's zoom in. Okay, so the semi-transient was a little bit off. Um, we're quite far zoomed in now, so this sort of gap isn't noticeable at all. If you want to get super accurate, you can, but I like to leave a tiny bit of space so you don't get any pops and clicks. Um, and all we're going to do is double click. And there we go, we've told Ableton that that is where we want to start. All we have to do now is hover over our first transient marker or warp marker, hold down control and click. And we want to go set here, 111. And this is going to tell Ableton that this is the first beat of the first bar. There we go. Let's zoom out. And as we know, most kind of Western music is arranged in bars of 32 or 64, etc., or even you know slightly less bars of 8, 16, etc. Um, so it's kind of worth bearing that in mind just as a, an overall idea of how accurate we're getting with our warping. So let's just drag our main audio back to number one. It's on one here. And let's just look up the top. We've got our main arrangement window in bars of eight here. So every number here is a bar of Eight. And if we look even closer, we can see that's the end of bar 48, beginning of bar 49, and we can see that something is going to happen here in the arrangement. So it's just a good idea just to bear in mind, you know, if it's looking like this, you're probably on the right track here. So come back down to our window, bar number one. Let's look at bar number five, remember that's the end of bar four, the beginning of bar five, and let's see how 
accurate we are without doing any processing yet. Looking like that's the beat. It's looking like it's a tiny bit out. So let's give it a play. Yeah, that looks good. Let's just tighten it up. And let's play it on bar nine. Looking good so far. You know, this is an electronic track. It's been probably made on a DAW like Ableton or Logic. So it's going to be in time pretty much. Um, we just need to make sure that Ableton is reading it like that. So here we go, bar 40 here. Let's zoom in and see if we're accurate. We can sort of tell that this is a main uh, arrangement feature part of the track just by the waveform. So let's zoom in. And it's done a pretty good job. Let's get it a bit more accurate. Double click, drag back onto the marker. Let's give it a play. Pretty good. Let's do this on the fly. Let's go to bar 57. Let's have a quick look as it goes past. Really good. Let's tighten up a bit. Bit more. Let's go into bar sixty-nine. Looking pretty good. Let's tighten it up a tiny bit. Yep. And I think we're looking good. Let's just try it again. Yep, that looks good. And there we go. That is one track fully warped. Um, let's go back to the beginning because we started from here. Let's get rid of our transient marker here. Maybe we want to include this in our DJ mix. So let's give ourselves some space on the arrange. Let's pull up to the beginning of bar nine. Let's move back. Oops, not enough room. Let's undo that. Let's go to 17, give ourselves enough room. There we go. And if we zoom in at the beginning, we know that this is uh, a bar marker here. It looks like it's a little bit off. So let's come into bar nine. Yeah, everything just looks a tiny bit off. So let's nudge the beginning. I think that's a nice part and let's give it a play yeah yeah that looks really good so there we have it that is how to walk a track in Ableton Live Thanks for watching the DJ Mixtape guys. If you like the video, press like. If you wanna see more, press subscribe. Uh, and as always, tell us uh, what you do wanna see and what you don't wanna see. Tell us what you like and what you don't like. And we will see you back next time on the DJ Mixtape.